Gotti! <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> What's up guys, Big D Wiz, Wilson Audio Labs here today. We're gonna to talk about the Soundstream Rubicon series. These came out around 2010. You can see most of these have this blue finish, but so run across these limited edition versions, the 2500 DLE. What's up with that? Well, the seller says that they're limited, restricted, exactly the same as 2500D and it'll drive your neighbors insane from the dirty base. <laughs> so yeah, we had to have one of these as we gotta drive our neighbors insane with some dirty base. So let's unbox it, look inside, and see what this amp is all about. The amp comes with this really nice inline a &L fuse holder as well as remote base cable and the remote base knob. It's plastic and mine has a broken ear. But here are the ratings. At four ohms, 1000 watts, two ohms, 1700, one ohm, 2500, 250 amp fuse. It doesn't say if this is RMS or what, so we don't know. 580 millimeters by 205 by 60, 22.8 by eight by 2.3 inches. All right, next we'll take a look at the heat sink of this amp. It's very nice looking, has a black anodized finish with the polished aluminum kind of going down the middle. Looks really slick. Here on this one end, we have line in, line outs for RCAs, input level, subsonic filter. We have a switch for input sensitivity, whether low sensitivity or high, low pass filter, bass boost. There's also a master slave switch for bridging these amps together phase adjustment and the data link connection and again that's for strapping two of these amps together and remote control for the base knob on the opposite end we have the beefy power terminals accepting one alt power and ground then a little bit further down we have four gauge speaker terminals yeah that's kind of odd you don't see a whole lot of amplifiers with four gauge most of the time you see two sets of eight gauge output so nice other than the anodized black finish, here is some additional limited edition graphics here on the amp. Kind of differentiates it from the regular one. Got the amp connected up here on the dyno with a dual toolmaker, solid copper inputs. It's wired up, so let's fire it up. All right, so we have the gains adjusted to match our source unit. Now we're gonna try it on the dyno. First up, four ohm certified 1% THD, 40 Hertz. Says it does a thousand watts. We didn't get that. We got 813 watts, 14.32 volts. And we pulled 70 amps. That's about 81% efficiency, so that's pretty good. So we thought, well, maybe, you know, it doesn't do it certified maybe we'll do dynamically so let's try dynamic at 40 hertz at four ohms and we're still short well short of that 1000 watts 883 watts at 14.42 so not quite there at four ohms 83.8 amps of current drawn we measured 73 percent efficiency and that's using the inrush current mode on the clamp meter two ohms to one percent thd 40 hertz it's rated 1700 watts and yeah, again, we fell short, 1,367 watts, 14.46, so we got plenty of voltage. And we pulled 133.2 amps. That measures 71% efficiency. All right, so next test at two ohms is the uncertified test. That takes us up to clipping of the amplifier. So we're gonna do 40 hertz again. We're rated 1,700 watts, and we got right at 1,500, so a couple hundred watts short. 144.2 amps strong, about 72.4% efficiency. That's pretty good. Efficiency wise, not so good for not doing this rated power. Dynamic at two ohms, 40 hertz. Can we get the 1700 watts? Mighty close, 1647 watts. Just 53 watts away at 14.46. Inrush current mode of the Fluke says 155.4, 73.3% efficient. All right, next up, we'll do the one ohm test, and this is where it's rated 2,500 watts. 
based on what we've seen before. I don't think we're going to get there. What do you think? 1 ohm, 1% THD, 40 hertz, rated 2,500 watts. Yeah, we're well short, 1,768 at 14.3. And the fluke meter says 195.5 amps. That's about 63.2% efficient. Well, let's try it uncertified up to clipping. Maybe it can reach that 2,500 watts, right? Well, actually a lot closer than I thought. Look at that, 2,230 watts. So we're only a couple hundred watts away at 14.09 and the current pull 240.9, that's 65.7% efficient. Well, we got so close, what do you think about dynamic? Is it possible? Can we beat the rated power? Yes, we can! Rated 2,500 watts. Look at this, 2,696 yeah, boy. at 14.26. So it actually does a 2500 even though it's dynamic and it doesn't really specify in the manual if it's dynamic or whatever but still we did it 269.9 amps 70 percent efficient I wanted to show a couple demos, one with music and one with a test tone. So let's check it out and see how much power this amp actually puts out to a 4 ohm sub. Check it out. All right, the thing to note real quick about this 40 hertz test tone is the sub is a 600 watt RMS sub and the thing you hear at the end is something falling off a shelf. <laughs> All right, so we've done the test. We've done a sound demo. Let's take the bottom panel off this amp. Let's check out the internals. I'll to let you guys view the beauty, listen to the music. There you have the test, the overview, and the demo of the Soundstream Rubicon 2500.1 DLE. Hope you guys appreciate the video. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, you know what to do. Stick around. Got more cool videos coming up. Make sure you stay tuned to the end because I always have some extras for you. BD Wiz, I'm out of here. Soundstream Rubicon, uncertified, 0.8 at 40 hertz will it survive let's hope so beautiful amp hold to your hats don't let them fall off you big dummy nice 2468 watts 0.8 14.06 volts we pulled 290.2 292.0 amps of current all right, we're gonna try the Soundstream Rubicon. Beautiful amplifier here. Limited edition, 2500.1 LE. We're gonna try it at 0.8 dynamic burst at 40 hertz. And let's see what it'll do. It's not rated to handle it, but um, it's only two tenths of an ohm lower than what's rated to handle, so I think we'll be okay. Let's try it out. Thirty two hundred forty three watts at fourteen point two six. Very nice.